You're listening to the KB Podcast Network. <laughs> Coming up on this episode of the Kingdom Bringer Podcast. I was driving down the road one day, I saw the big billboard that said $750 million Powerball. If I literally won that money tonight, (laughs) almost a billion dollars, what would I do? What is it about us? Is there a grace on our lives just to receive and be, you know, we're not even trying to, but for whatever reason, people feel safe, open, loved, comfortable to let go of some things you know it just and and from that moment on I was able to just like this load was taken off of me just by opening up and letting someone know Everybody, what is going on? I'm your host, Darren Eubanks, and this is the Kingdom Bringer Podcast. Thank you for checking us out if this is your first time, and thank you for tuning back in if you've heard us before. Have you listened to us on Apple Podcasts? If so, give us a rating and a review. We would love that so much. Have you checked out KingdomBringer.com? Where the blogs, easy access to the podcast, go visit kingdombringer.com. I hope you guys are blessed by this interview today. I sat down with some good friends, Josh and Nacy Littlejohn. I've had them on separately a couple different times throughout this, this podcast life. I think season two, I had each of them on. Season one, I had Josh on. And I had the privilege of going to Next Level Experience that you've heard me talk about before on this podcast. And it was in Dallas, Texas. And I got to actually stay with the Little Johns at their house. And they're a blessing. But we got to go across the street to a co-worker space that they rent out. And we sat down and recorded an episode. It was awesome. They have a ministry called Safe Time where they, they talk to people who need to talk. They actually offer themselves up as a, as an ear, as a shoulder to lean on to anybody. And it's completely free. And they do this. This is their ministry. This is what they're going after right now. They create a space to like just offer themselves up as a listening ear. And it's beautiful. I love the uniqueness of this ministry. And these two are probably the most unique people that I've ever met in my life. They're amazing friends. God's done so much in their life. And this was just such an awesome experience to be able to sit down with them and record this episode. So I believe you're going to be blessed. I believe you're going to be blessed today. Don't forget to check out kingdombringer.com to rate and review this thing right here on Apple Podcasts. Share it with your friends. That's it. Enjoy the episode, the sit down with Josh and Nacy Littlejohn. This is Kingdom Through Safe Time. Be blessed. So I wanted to get together. I've, I've done each of you guys on my podcast, like through Skype. Right. Actually, I've had you in before, Josh. Mm-hmm. You've been in. Sit down. But I've wanted for a long time to have both of you guys together. And one of the things that I want to talk about is your guys' ministry, Safe Time. You guys had a, an awesome sit down with McIntyre where you got to kind of, in my opinion, probably showcase to the whole world what this is all about. Like, I think some friends probably know where this came from and what your guys' heart is on this. But, um, and you guys are you guys are launching it's safe time dot live, correct? Right. Safe time dot live. And I want to give you guys an opportunity to kind of just talk about your heart. And Josh, I'll start with you. Talk about where safe time, like where that was birthed from. Um I guess tell us what it is and then kind of where it came from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. So safe time dot live is a website uh that allows anybody can go on it and book time to have a video call 
with someone like Nacy and I, and right now it is Nacy and I, but we have vision to grow up beyond us, uh, that we really believe in the power of of truth telling and confession and bringing things out of the dark in your life into the light with people uh, that that won't judge you, but that will love you, uh, tell you the tell you the good news that you are uh, you already forgiven for those things. There is no shame in those things. You can let go of all that. There's healing and freedom on the other side of those things. Um, and so it, it's a place where people can go to book a video call and for free. And basically get to share their heart with loving people that will listen, understand, and pray for them. I think one of the things that is so, like, I'll use the word interesting to me about this ministry is that it just seems way too simple. Like, <laughs> this seems like something <laughs> in this in this social media world that we live in and, like, FaceTime and all that stuff. This just seems like, oh, that could be a ministry. And, like... I've never heard of this. Like I've never heard of just simply communicating with someone being a ministry. So <laughs> Nacy, can you explain to me like your guys' statements of belief? <laughs> just kidding. <Yeah. laughs> just kidding. Can you, for you, what does this mean? Like why he mentioned like the power of like confession and honesty. Like what does that mean to you guys? Why do you feel like that's such an important thing to, to go after? Well, our inward self, our hearts are so important because out of our hearts flows what we do in life, what we say, how we respond in situations. And so if our heart's not whole, if it's not healthy, Mm -hmm. then that's going to affect several areas of our life. So our heart is for people to have healthy hearts and be free and whole Mm -hmm. and to let go of what's troubling them, let go of whatever they're carrying whatever shame, fear, anxiety, regret, uh, whatever it is that's troubling them, we want them to let go of that because on the other side of that is freedom. So do you feel like this is something that's been lacking? Like I'll say in the church or in, um, I guess in the world, is this something? Because for me, I think a successful business slash ministry is Mm -hmm. one that is unique and Mm -hmm. not really available out there. Is this something for you guys personally that wasn't available for you? Uh, that's a good question. I would say, um, uh, well, and it's not to bag, you know, no, no, other no. things. It's just, I think it's a good idea. It's definitely a, do you, do you want to answer that? Well, I would say it's something for us personally that we receive so much freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, when we actually did bring those things that we were holding on to the things that we thought no one needed to know, the things that we thought were, personal, like, why should I tell anybody that the things, the lies that the enemy had been feeding us, yeah. that it doesn't matter if we speak up, we found freedom when we actually did. And that's when the true healing began. And so it's not so much as it wasn't offered. Like we're, we encourage people. If you're, we don't um, expect them to just come to us. We say, find somebody that is safe. And if you don't have somebody that's safe, then come to our website. Right. That's and good. so it's, it's more just through our own experience, we've seen it firsthand mm-hmm. and we've seen it in the lives of the people that we, we do talk to and the people that do book time with us. That's good. Yeah. So give me like the, that's good. The basic, like what this looks like, like you guys have a website, mm-hmm. safe I'm, I'm somebody who needs to talk to someone. Right. I've heard about this unique ministry where somebody will actually listen to me and <laughs> maybe somebody that I've never met before, which may make it a little easier actually for me to confess some things to or communicate with, I think personally, right. what would I do? What's the basic? Yeah. You, you go to safe time.live. It's very, we've, we've tried to make it very clear and simple. And so there's just a really simple, like how this works. You book it. Like a lot of days you can book haircuts or, you know, what else can you just book a, your little appointment online, yeah. you know, and it's just the same. Order your groceries at Walmart. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same. And you just pick a time slot that works for you. And then like a couple minutes before that scheduled time, you'll just click the link and then it'll be a video call just like FaceTime or just like Skype or whatever yeah. with uh, right now, Nacy and I and, and you. And then it's, it's a 45 minute session and if it's somebody that we've never met before, which we're starting to get a lot of, it's it's usually we'll spend the first couple of minutes just saying hi, letting them know who Nacy and I are, that uh, that we, we just, I do a little summary of our live kind of like, hey, listen, you're talking to two people 
whatever you think we are now, you know, whatever we look like to you now in the video call, and we've got four kids and the dog and, and all that, whatever, we just want to let you know that we've been through, we didn't always used to be this way. We've been through A, B, C, D, and E. And then I was even thinking about today, um, it's, you know, we, we, we really don't want to just do that, hey, we've been through darkness and we, we can relate because we've been through so many bad things. But even even beyond that, we've been um, business owners. We've been in church leadership. We've helped start a church. We've been, you know, we're parents, obviously. Just all these other things. And so just like there's just a kind of a gamut of things that we've been in the dark. And then just we've been in a lot of things that maybe a lot of people haven't even in quote unquote the light and so it's just like we're really trying not i I don't really want to just box it in for people that have been through these awful things hey but really it's like traumatic uh, yeah yeah, i have a being starting a church and and doing that as well it's like man i would love it if a pastor wanted to call in and have a safe time call one day and just be like man i think you'll probably relate to this and yeah. Yeah, just to even just to even have a safe place to like i don't feel like i can tell anybody in my congregation this or just they might you know just that whole thing but it's really just we're making a space available for understanding and love and uh but we're just beyond the video calls themselves the mission of kind of safe time i think is what nacy said we're promoting the message of that there's healing when we bring stuff out of the dark and into light and that's daily not just you know, things you've done when you were 13 or that happened to you when you were 12 or 19, but like anxiety now, you know, I feel like you have anyone to talk to for whatever reason we're going to say. So the message is we're going to promote, talk to someone because there's healing. You can talk to us if you'd like. It sounds too easy, bro. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know that this is going to work. It sounds way too easy. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about like where this vision of like officially for safe time as a as a business, as a ministry, where that came from, what sparked that for you? So where did the idea, uh, I was driving down the road and, um, well, we moved to Dallas two and a half years ago to seek like with no really plan, but we knew God had something different for our lives. We moved from Kansas to Dallas on full of faith and just say, we're going to come down because we know God's got something with us. And we instantly started working at a church a great church, a church that's awesome, but we got asked to do that. They needed help. And so we did, and we did that for a year and a half. We did some great work there. They were going through some explosive growth. And so we helped them. Uh, we helped build a program, a kids program, and then a small group deal. And, uh, so that we did that for about a year and a half, but then, uh, you know, a year and a half into that, I sort of started getting anxious or kind of like going, this, this isn't for me. Like, I'm proud of the work we did here, but this isn't like, I just felt like we think we both did. We felt like we were sitting in uh, someone else's seat. Like, you know, we were glad to do this, but now it's time to like, we're in somebody else's spot. And and so, so we made a tough decision to resign. That was, uh, it was a hard decision, but it was, it was good for us. And then, and then I, uh, I had a dream about, the next step, I was going to get a job at a roofing company of all things, which I didn't know how to do, but I had a dream and I knew a guy. And so I said, man, can I, can I come work for you? Here's the dream. He said, yes. Yeah. So I, like two months into that, which I knew that wasn't going to be my permanent thing either, but now we're here in Dallas, like, God, what do you want us to do? And so while I was doing that, I was driving down the road one day, I saw the big billboard that said $750 million Powerball. And I literally said, uh, I asked God, I was like, I went through this whole fantasy exercise you know Amen. imagination i do it every time we use yeah. our imagination what you know it's a good yeah. thing and what would what kind of if i literally won that money tonight <laughs> ha, almost a billion dollars what would i do yeah. what would nacy and i do what would my family do what how would we lead what would we do and so i was like you know i went through the the deal and it's it's good to do those things yeah. like like literally like i was like well we'd you know We'd buy some houses. We'd travel a lot. We'd have a lot nicer cars. You know, we'd yeah. see the world. We'd do whatever. But I, but then if I was just being honest with myself, I knew I was like, yeah, but uh, we're living for more than that, right? We already are, right? Right. So what would we do if like money was literally no issue? What would we do? 
And then I, I literally heard him say, literally heard him say in my spirit, whatever. Yeah. He said, uh, I do what you're already doing. And I was like, well, what are we already doing? Well, what, one thing we already love to do and that especially Nacy does so well is that we love to, to be with people and to hear their stories and hear them say the words, which was going, which happens all the time. Hey, I never, I mean, I just feel like I could tell you guys anything. I've never told anyone this. Wow. And so when you start hearing that phrase a bunch, then you start realizing, well, maybe uh, this is needed because we're not trying to get anything out of anyone. Right. What is it about us? Is there a grace on our lives just to receive and uh, be without trying? Just like we, it's like, do we put off something that, you know, we're not even trying to, but it, for whatever reason, people feel safe, open, loved, comfortable to let go of some things with. And so if that's what we're already doing, and he said, I want you to do what you're already doing. I'm like, what if we could do that more intentionally and do it online and yeah. use, and so I had the idea. And then within a couple of weeks, I had a little rudimentary website built and we just did one little face, kind of a Facebook post. And we, we've been doing these safe time calls, uh, since April of 2019. And, uh, so, and then, so we did it for six months and then went to a next level event, which is my friend's amazing weekend conference thing yep. where he really gets you to step out of the boat and put faith, faith in things. And out of that thing, we are like, let's, let's go in and make this a thing. And so now there's an actual dedicated website to it. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. We're trying to grow it. Like, so yeah, that's a long story. But that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Nacy, you, you had mentioned something earlier about you guys from had experience in the power of like confession. Do you feel comfortable sharing a little bit about that, about where that, what that experience was for you? Sure. So, I mean, our past is no secret. Now we came out of darkness into light. Part of that darkness yeah. was drug addiction. And so saying you're delivered from drugs is like, glamorous it's socially accepted you for whatever reason kind of sound cool or whatever like oh i wish like i had a <laughs> I had story harder than you did. yeah like people for whatever reason accept that and are like wow that's amazing story yeah but there's things inside that no one knows about unless you actually open up about it it mm -hmm. could be um anything that's unseen and so I had some of that. We, Josh and I both did. And we we had had an abortion uh, when we were dating and mm -hmm. never told anybody. And so this was something that we were carrying, even though we were delivered from drugs. We were walking with the Lord. Um, we were pursuing, you know, what he had for us. But we never opened up about this. And so it was holding us in bondage. It was affecting our marriage. It started overflowing and affecting areas of our life. And so it just, and, and God is so good. He's with us every step of the way, preparing our hearts and just like, you know, like always giving us opportunities, but he waits till we're ready and we have to like be willing. Like he gave me so many opportunities, but he was also so patient with me too. And That's so good. there came a time where I was just like, sitting in around a table and I'm looking around and everyone around the table, um, had had a baby out of wedlock and they had their babies mm. and it just hit me in that moment. And I was just overcome with this great sadness and just like, I, I can't believe I'm holding this in and I, I don't even have my baby. And I'm just like, it's, you know, I just, it was like, I, I, just in that moment, I felt like it was time to share and open up with these people and tell them how um, proud I am of the courage they had. That's good. And I just good said, point. I didn't have that courage in, at that time. And yeah. this is what I did. And, you know, it just, and, and from that moment on, I was able to just like this load was taken off of me just by opening up and letting someone know. And so that's kind of our heart behind this, like, it changed everything. It changed our marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, it like brought us closer together. Like it just the goodness of God, his grace, his love, and 
just his um, endless pursuit of me um, in during that journey, I I want to speak of it now. Like I can't hold it in. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, just because I know that I, others are doing that same thing. I wasn't alone in hiding it. There's other people out there and we just want them to receive the same freedom and know like it is okay to speak of it. It's okay to talk about the pain and, and however it affected you. I remember when you guys um, kind of came out with this, this abortion story. And I, um, I wasn't at the, the dinner where you guys officially did it, but you guys could fit, you guys kind of stood in front of the church too. And you confessed this. And I think there's something cool about, I think you guys are providing a ministry that's going to bring freedom to the people that call in to confess. But there's also something that happens. Like, I think you guys carried a key when you guys confessed. I really think it affected the hearers of that too. You know, like there was a room full of people that you guys were known as the couple that overcame drugs, right? I mean, it was, Mm -hmm. that story was out there. You each kind of have your own drug overcoming story and darkness and light. And we all knew that. And I think for, for whatever reason, even in the church, I think we have this mindset of like, everybody has something and that's the thing. So like you guys were known as that, but when you came out with this other thing, it was like it, Oh, they're not just a one trick pony, you know, like (laughs) you guys aren't just Mm -hmm. only experts on Mm -hmm. drug addiction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're actually experts on life. Like Mm -hmm. you've been through more than just one struggle and one thing. And so I feel like it, it unlocked a lot of things. And, um, yes, you guys, new marriage was very clear. It was very evident to everybody that was around you guys that God was really doing something. But, um, I know how impactful that was for me to hear that story. I've never been through that situation, but just, I think what it did was it showed me crap. You guys must've really been hurting Mm -hmm. and I didn't even know, you know, like knowing that that was something you guys were holding on to and hadn't shared. It was like a definitely an empathy in my heart of like, ugh, and I'm thankful. Like Mm -hmm. in that moment, you're like, thank God they had the, courage i I think it was courage that kind of unlocked some doors there for sure um josh for you what was that situation like like that she just that she just shared what was that for you because you guys had some stuff in your marriage to deal with with that right like some forgiveness stuff that you guys had dealt with i mean i've I've heard you talk about that Mm -hmm. yeah because when something's not talked about you kind of get to use your imagination Mm -hmm. how the other person feels yeah i You know, that's so we did that when we were dating and and totally on drugs. I mean, we were we were using meth every single day, multiple times a day. Uh, It wasn't even about getting, quote unquote, high anymore. It was just like daily living. And and that that's that's when we did that. And then um, so whenever like I my had an intervention kind of in my life and Nacy got uh, kind of radically uh, delivered from drug addiction um, and so we kind of, we got clean, not kind of got clean, uh, everything back on track, you know, back our lives, you know, we came back to life really, or maybe had life for the first time and then got married shortly after that. And then, you know, started just kind of living life, had a baby. Uh, but that was like one thing that I never wanted to, to talk about. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm really good. I'm a, I'm like a runner, a, like escaper. I just like, I want to like, yeah. If there's pain over here, I want to look over here. Yeah. You know, or, you know, just forget about it. I don't want to talk about painful things or negative things. And uh, that's just kind of more my nature. And so um, it was just kind of never talked about. It. And I for sure didn't want to talk about it. And uh, but it would always like um, be a, like an elephant in the room. I, I perceived it as like, especially when we would like drive like we'd drive to Wichita and there's like five or six, you know, pro-life billboards right. on the way there and back. And, yeah. and I, like Nacy would always like, uh, see them and start crying. She would and- see them and start crying. And and so whenever I see, you know, my default reaction to that was get mad for whatever reason. Great guy. But like, that was just my, 
I don't know. Cause oh, like, the old Josh. Yeah, or just like I when when there's pain, I was like, I don't want to deal with it. I just want to get mad. And I was like, why can't you just? We're forgiven. Oh, like why can't you move on? Why? Yeah, we're forgiven. Like God doesn't even remember that anymore, right? right? And so right. I can get real theological to justify, you know, why I don't want to like confront uh, or walk through the reality of that. You know, so I was scared. I think. Yeah. And I was scared. And when I'm scared, when I was scared about that, I reacted in anger. And so I was just like, I would always get frustrated. I'm like, because we'd go for the weekend. I'm like, you're going to ruin our weekend. <laughs> like, she's already crying. Yeah. You know, super selfish. But like, I was literally using, you know, scripture, theology to like justify like why we shouldn't even talk about this anymore. Right. Which is sick, yep. you know. But I didn't have a revelation of like, no, God wanted to bring that up because he yeah it's forgiven is already forgiven it was forgiven before it happened uh but could there actually be healing on the other side of that let me walk you through the pain of this let me show you where i was during this i want come here son i want to hold your hand and lead you through this because you need to know the gravity of it and i think you need to know the gravity of it not only to you know talk about it one day but just to know the depths of kind of what, what I've done for you, the depths of the good news, the depths of like grace, yeah, you know, the depths of forgiveness. And so it was just a, a very heal, healing thing that I just wanted to sweep under the rug, like, Hey, forgive, forget, boom. Why are we even talking about this anymore? That was the old us, but it was a big deal. Do you feel like, um, I mean, obviously that experience, and I, I think what you said, Macy was spot on, like the question that I asked was the wrong question. Like, were you guys missing that? That's why you started this. No, you, you were like, no, we actually received that. That's why we started this. I think that's awesome. And so it's very evident that an overcomer can teach, you know, like can show, can guide. And I think, um, it took, it took you guys going through that for sure to be something for someone else. So like with this ministry, Josh, what, I'll, I'll go back to Macy. What is, what do you want to see from this? Like to you, I use the word like successful loosely. I'm not saying a success, but what would this be? What are you aiming for out of this ministry? What do you hope to see bear fruit in this ministry? I just want to see people healthy and whole. I want their hearts to be healthy and whole, them to be emotionally healthy and whole. I think um, our inward self is something that's overlooked and not understood. I think there's a lot of people who go after self-help and it's not us who can help ourselves, but it's Jesus in us who can help us and we need to go to him. We need to look to him. But sometimes that is, like Josh said, we have to stop lying to ourselves and admit that there is something there. Yeah. And so I just, I guess my heart for this is just to see people open up with whoever is safe in their life so they can begin the step to freedom. And because also when you open up, it gives others courage to know that they're not alone. You know, a lot of times in my mm. life, I thought no one knew what I was going through or no one would understand. But the reality is there's topics that aren't talked about and the enemy like keeps us in bondage by not talking about it. So I just want to expose the enemy and where his lies are and let people know that there is freedom and that there's a God who's recklessly pursuing them. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. How about you, Josh? What's same thing? I mean, are, do you have other specific things that you're looking for as a way to say, this is a, this is a good ministry. Mm -hmm. This is something that we're going to continue to go after. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just what Nacy just said, for sure. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess I would just, my hope is, my vision is like one day that there would be always a place that is known that pe anyone can always go to 24-7 to unburden themselves, come in with fear or anxiety or shame and leave with hope, love and faith for free. Uh, from wherever they are with people that are full of grace and wisdom and love. And so like, that's the big, like if I just to simplify it, that's like the big goal. 
So where can I always go for free that someone's going to be seen, known, understood, loved uh, at all times? You know, and yeah. so that's that's the big thing. The thing the people we're talking to right now, we're going. It's just been so amazing, and and uh, uh, but but the things Nacy was saying is is exactly right. The emotional healing. This is a healing ministry. Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, um, I got somebody prayed over me one time, and, and they said you have the gift of healing. Well, I thought they totally were wrong, like it, because I was defining healing. Right now, if you said, "Hey, we're gonna have a healing service in that's the church," good. what yeah. what is that? Yeah, physical healing. That's gonna be physical outward. Yeah, healing. Right, you're gonna get the legs and the yep. and all the stuff. And and I, th- it's so funny how we sort of put. Fi- it's almost like we put physical outward healing above inward healing. The thing is you can't really see it's true. instantly the things that don't show up on camera, the things that, you know, um, yeah. uh, but, but it's healing nonetheless. It's healing of hearts. Um, but that, that's, that would be my goal of the success is like, if there's always a place that people can come for free, uh, to, to get love, the good news that they are forgiven, yeah. So you have you have said free like four times in this, and I, I'm, yeah. for real, why why do you continue to emphasize that? Why is that so important that this is a free thing? Hmm. I didn't really mean to emphasize that. No, I but, know, I get it, but I think it's something that's on your heart because you said it a bunch. Yeah. It's. I think there's just so much this day and age that there's a catch. Um. There's there's either a catch. There's an agenda like, yeah, it's free, but then what? Like there's an upsell, like it's free until you sign up for my pack coaching pack. Like there's another, it's free to get into the lobby, but if you really want the good stuff, it's extra. And not, I'm not saying that no, that's any of that's bad. Like, a, you know, there's, there's things that are great and you should pay for and all that. But, uh, I, this, I think we've just, Nacy and I have both been convicted since day one um, that we're going to just freely, freely we've received, freely we're going to give away. And so, um, it's, uh, do you want to add, why don't you add to that a little bit? No, I think what you said was great. Like we don't ever want anybody to have to pay because mm-hmm. it's kind of biblical. It's like <laughs> healing was free in the Bible and, and that's just our heart. That's just, we want this to be, we don't want anyone to have a reason not to book. There you go. Mm-hmm. We that's don't. Good. You know, I could, yeah. I, I could totally see that being a, I mean, and I, you know, I came from a, a promotional background. Like I would put on concerts and do events and I always had people telling me inside the church, you can't make it for free because people aren't going to think that it's worth it. People have to be willing to pay for it. Mm-hmm. How is this different than that? Is this worth it if it's free? It's a good point. I mean, I, I totally can see that. And I, and I do believe that about some like I can totally get there. Yeah. Like I feel like it's justifiable if we would charge. Like it's right. it's really not. I really want to be clear. I'm not making a value judgment on anything that does cost money. I pay. We all pay for things. You know, thing, things are worth paying for. They're worth the money. There. But is our personal? We're not trying to make our personal conviction a sort of doctrine for everyone. This is just like what God's told us to do. And so, if, and if our per, if we're at peace. Wherever we're at peace, that's what we know he's told us to do. And so does that make sense? Good, and yeah. so it's really, it's, it's, it's not in comparison to anything else. We just know for us, for this, we want it to be free. And now at the same time, let's be real. This thing takes money to run. And if for us to grow it like it, we're going to need money to run it. And so it's going to be free to anyone who calls, but we're really looking for people that really believe in what we're doing and get it. I'm not trying to sell it to anyone. I don't want to get in that mode where I'm trying to sell it. Like, Hey, this is what, this is the numbers. This is, you know, but, uh, I just know that there's people like us that will get this. And we're asking those people to, to donate to it, financially support it. And so, so we are asking for money, we don't really ask really much. We've sent out one email to a group of friends, yeah. but, uh, but this thing's going to take money to run. And so really we're actually, we're relying on the Lord to activate the hearts of people that also have the same heart we do to, to want to sow in and partner and support what we're doing. 
It's kind of the simple, simple way to say it. So let's be real too. You have officially given yourself to this, right? Mm-hmm. You no longer have a income job, right? right? You no longer have a job that you're going to. You have dedicated your time and your your lives mm-hmm. to this thing, right? Yeah. Have- awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I think I we mean, are employed. Like yeah. we're actually. Safe Time Incorporated is a thing, and it's a 501c3 nonprofit. And AC and I are, I'm the president. We're actually employed by the organization that we, it's <laughs> awesome, that we started. Yeah. And it's funny, I have to remind myself of that every day. I'm like, yeah. no, I do have a job. That's, and my job is to good. grow this thing. It's good. And do what God's told us to do and do it well, do it the best we can, sort of like build it, field of dreams. Like we're going to build it and they will come. Hopefully the dollars will come, the supporters will come, the prayers yeah. will come. Yeah. But uh, that's the place of faith we're in right now. And uh, it's just, you know, I would probably need to go watch that movie again. I think it'll be good. Uh, it, it's, but, a, it's a good movie. <laughs> um, but that's kind of the mentality we're in. I think there's strategies and there's... What kind of things are you doing right now? Because you, you guys started this Ground Zero. This is your guys' baby. Mm-hmm. What are you doing right now to get the word out there? Because this is something that the word has to get out there mm-hmm. for people to call yeah. for people to set up this thing. Right. Yeah. It's definitely a website based thing. Like yeah. it's a web business. You've been saying that lately, right? Online. Like this it's is on, an it's an online thing. thing. Yeah. It's an online thing. And so, uh, we spent the last three months or so, uh, hired, we hired a, a group of these guys that were friends of ours, but they have a marketing firm, uh, well, web design and video production. And so they, they designed our website. Um, well, we did it together, but, you know, they actually did it. But uh, made a couple of videos for us. So the last three months have just been really nailing down what – making that thing really clear. And uh, so and it's hard, it, sounds, it sounds simple, but it's actually hard harder than it's – we wanted savetime.live to be very clear. What is this? How, do, how does it work? Uh, so that, that's done now. There's a little bitty tweaks, but really right now is just getting the word out, just like you said. And so social media heavy big time. And so we're really just trying to produce a lot of content that really pushes the message of healing and freedom. If, if you'll just, and it's not just one time. It's like, if you'll open your mouth and let it out and be honest, be honest and, uh, I was thinking the other day, there's just very little things in your life that have been resolved by you staying silent. You know, That's it's, good. it's, it's true. Like almost everything relationship or maybe a conflict at work or something, someone had to speak up along the way. It's like ingrained in the way we get through things and past things. It's even the way we get saved, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so it's that message. We're just trying to get the word. It's social media. It's going on doing podcasts like this, but, um, and so, yeah, that's where we're at. So you and I have had, talks. and we're doing the calls. So, yeah, so, go ahead. so it's two sided. So we, we have multiple calls scheduled this week with people that have, that have scheduled time to talk, to get stuff off their chest. So that takes a lot of time. Right. And then it's two sided, then getting the word out about what we're doing. So we're, it's doing the service as well as doing the marketing and the content creation. And, and how much prayer goes into this thing for you two? Is that something, is that part of this thing? <laughs> I know, Nancy, I, I know your, your, <laughs> your private prayer life I'm yes. aware of. It's not. So it's not as private as you might think it is, but talk about that. Like what kind of prayer you personally do you put into this? Um, I would say in my secret place with the Lord every day, I'm praying for it. Um, I'm praying for Josh. I'm lifting him up. I'm asking God to speak to him, give him clarity and direction because I trust Josh leadership and where he's going. And I just, I feel like that's how I can support him and all he's doing with him building it right now. But also, um, we pray for every person we're going to talk to on the phone. Mm -hmm. We pray before our calls. We pray after our calls. We, Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes if there's something heavy on our hearts at night, before we go to bed, we're like, let's pray for this person right now. Um, and then even after we've had a call with someone, if they've shared something like, Hey, we're going to be doing this, this, and this, um, we're going to be praying for them on those days that they said they had that. That's good. And so quite a bit of Mm -hmm. prayer goes into it because he's everything and, without it's not us it's through him and so we're heavily relying on him to show up that's good 
Josh, what's some of the future dreams for this ministry you've talked about incorporating? Right now, it's just you two taking calls. Mm -hmm. um, it's you two doing doing the work. What's the, what's the vision look like for this? Uh, the the one of the parts of the bigger vision is that we it would grow beyond Nacy and I, and so that would look like, uh, as far as I know right now, that would look like recruiting other volunteer husband and wife teams to do, to take calls like we take calls. Um, that would mean, um, and it wouldn't be just anyone. These would be highly just people that have a grace in the heart for the same thing. People that have been through some hard things, uh, been through some life experience, people that have the gift of grace and understanding. Uh, so that, that would be a, a huge goal that would, in my mind, that would be the next like a big phase once we get all the kinks worked out and once it grows a little bit, but that's exciting. And I'll tell you why that's exciting is that I, when we first started this, my whole, our whole focus was on the people that would call in. Everything was like, we got to do this service and provide this. We're going to, this is like obviously really needed. We're getting a lot of response. And uh, I didn't even realize how big of a, a marriage uh, builder it would be wow. for Nacy and I to do these calls together. Uh, it's such a, a joy to do ministry together. It's like, it's fun. It's, it's, it's important and it's heavy and, yeah. but it's serious, but it, it brings you life. Right. And there's just not, I, I didn't even, that wasn't even on my radar whatsoever because I didn't even have a grid for what it could look like to truly do ministry together. I mean, there's just, there's not a lot of outlets for it. I mean, you know, she's done kids ministry before and I could help with that a little, or I was doing worship and it's like, but this is truly togetherness. And it's, so it's such a marriage builder. I'm excited for building out that side of it because I know that it's going to build up the marriages just like it has with ours. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's a uh, part of it. And then also uh, the big part of it too would be to have a network referral, a referral network of people that we can connect callers into with that are like local to them. Yeah, that's good. And that's a big idea. Yeah. That's, that's a lot because people can literally call in from anywhere. We, this, we talked to a lady from Belgium the other day. We have a call with a guy from somewhere in Asia on Monday. Wow. Uh, and, uh, so, I mean, it's just that that's kind of a lot, but like if I was just, if I'm just dreaming, it'd be great to uh, say at the end of a call, say, Hey, can I have your permission to let, I know, I know of a couple of pastors in your area and can, can I have permission for them to reach out to you and call you? Would that be okay? You know, or something like that. Not, I don't want to just hook them up with an, uh, approved church. You, anyone can just go to a church service and that may be in and out, hit or miss. They might talk right. to somebody, they might not, but I really like to connect them with a the person. What we're doing is great. I don't think it, there's any substitute with physical proximity of a flesh and blood person. Yeah. You're not discipling people. No, that's not the goal. Yeah. It's, it's a gateway. It's a gateway to the love of God for healing. Uh, but ultimately it's not a thing that we want to be reliant on us, yeah. uh, to build like a, a kind of a, <clears throat> How should I say this? It's not our purpose to build like this returning clientele type thing. Right. Yeah. But we actually like, love it when people do, uh, return in book calls. We love hearing updates and testimonies. It yeah. builds our faith. Yeah. But I would say, would you agree? That's like not our main purpose is to like, I don't know. It's not really our main purpose, but we love it. Is that, what would you say? I would say, and I always tell people, you can book as many times as you want, mm -hmm. as long as we have a slot available. But I also feel that it's important, especially when we don't live by these people, for them to get plugged in somewhere. Right. And to have someone to go to. Or at least connect with be, a friend or something. Right. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. That's what I mean. Connect them with someone mm -hmm. in their proximity yeah. that they can begin to have a relationship and build community with. And yeah. so we don't mind. We love when people book calls with us, even if it's multiple times, mm -hmm. but we do, we still want people to, we want to be able to um, send people to someone they can connect with in their area as well. Yeah, that's good. 
And maybe it's really not our job to connect. The most people usually probably have like a, a group of people they know. But I think a lot of times what we're doing is when someone shares something that they were afraid to share, it's actually like we're when that it gets easier and easier. And so we're like that first you know, that big pillar they've got to knock. like surgery. Yeah, that big, they got to knock down. And it's almost like, so if we truly promote the message of, hey, let that out, we're actually giving them courage to do what they just did with us for someone maybe they already know. And it may be something like they need to have a confrontation with or a conflict with, or it may be something they need to confess something to that's hard. And it's like, we give them courage to do that. So maybe it's not our job to connect like, hey, let me give the number of this guy, but it may be really, we're just giving them courage to speak up and speak out. That's good because you said earlier too about this isn't just for like traumatic cases. And that's, I think we, at least me personally, I automatically think that. Like I'm always thinking of like someone that's super hurt that needs safe time. Mm -hmm. But people need, like you said, safe time for a good dream to be released, right? Or Mm -hmm. for an idea to be bounced off of somebody that, and, and like I said, yeah, they will listen. But honestly, this initial step is, probably healthy for me to somebody that I'm not in relationship with that can give me an outsider's idea. Mm -hmm. But then if you guys are pointing to how important relationship is, you're also turning them back around. Mm -hmm. You know, that healing was awesome. That courage was awesome. Now Mm -hmm. go do that in relationship. You know, I think that's awesome. I think that's great. Yeah. And you're right. It's not just big traumatic things. I mean, those are, you know, those are great and we relate to all that stuff, but also like, Um, it's okay to admit that you're lonely. You just moved to this new city and you don't know anyone and like, you're just having a tough time. Like, and that feels good to say, and that feels good to admit. It's just so funny that it's like when you're, you're finally being honest with yourself, with other people, it's, it's a big deal. And it really disarms the shame and the anxiety that comes with that when you're just allowed to kind of own that. I yeah. I spoke about this in a little video I did the other day, but that I we really believe that's where Jesus is. He's in where you really are. That's good. He's not where you think you want to be. Like he's like, no, like let me take you there, but I'm here. Wow. I'm in your mess. I'm in your anxiety. I am in your fear. Like I'm with you. And so until you can actually own that, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, you're good. you're gonna be scrambling. I feel like it's you're gonna be um you're almost going to be double-minded, you know, you're going to feel absent from God. He's going to, or he's going to feel distant from you, I think. And, and kind of rightly so, yeah. uh, because there's a, he's a truth teller. He only speaks in truth. And if it's just step one, it's honesty. That's good. So where's the best places right now? You guys are really pushing social media. You're pushing the website. <laughs> Give us a quick <laughs> rundown of where everybody can, first of all, find out more about, about these things and, yeah. and how they can support uh, so we're on Facebook, just search for safe time dot live, I think, or just safe time. Um, and then on Instagram we're safe time dot live, but the website is safe, www.safe time dot live. That's, that's kind of the thing that houses everything. It's, it's how to book time. If you've got somebody, we really rely heavily on referrals too. We get a lot of messages that says, Hey, I, 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 uh, I sent your info to my sister-in-law today. I don't know if she'll book, but like she really does need to talk to someone, for example. So, so we love for people to refer. I, there's, I tell people there's three ways you can help us. You can tell people about it. That's number one. Like just get the word out. If, If maybe you don't need to talk to us, great. That's fine. But tell people about it. There may be somebody that's like, they're going through something that's like out of your depth or you don't want to handle, you don't, you don't feel like you're equipped to handle. Tell them that they can go to save time dot live. Uh, pray for us is the second way. Like pray, 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 like cover our family. Just give us wisdom and direction. We're building something totally unique. Like that we're not copying, like we're not, you know, yeah, which is fun, but it's also like, man, what do we do today? What do we do next? What's the goal? What's the strategy? And then, um, the third way is give like, if you're looking for a place for, to give your offerings to, um, and this, this is, if your heart's being pulled to give to this and, uh, uh, then yeah, do that. And you can do that on safe time. Live slash partner. Um, and you can kind of see our heart for it more about what we're about and everything's there, but yeah, it's good. That's, that's where it's at. And we're, we're big on, we're big on promoting, not even promoting, but 
we talk about the voice of God a lot. It's like a passion for sure of Nacy's. She's written a children's book about it and got another one on the way about hearing God's voice. And uh, we're really trying to foster that in these calls. It's, so we we ask questions. We give advice based on how what permission we have to give. So if somebody asks, what do you think? This is, you know, we're kind of like, we kind of play it by ear with each person based yeah. on the permission that we feel like we've been given. But, uh, but really we're, we're asking questions. We, we, we do a lot of things like, man, we really think you should pray about this. And we really think you should ask God about this. This is what, you know, so we're yeah. really trying to always point and foster that personal one-on-one relation, like relationship with people that, can hear the Lord for themselves. He's always talking to us. Right. And yeah. so, in fact, we talked with a young lady the other night, um, who had, uh, trouble, like wondering if she could hear the voice of God or not. And, um, so we, we kind of like backed up and we did this little, they see this great little simple, uh, instruction and teaching on how to discern the voice of the Lord from the voice of ourselves and the voice of the enemy. Yeah. And so we're really trying to like that we're integrating that in because that's just been so key in our lives. Uh, and so it's really a lot of, you know, we're very, we're very well aware that Nacy and I don't have the answers. It's good. All right. We know the answer. You mean the person? Yes. Like we know him personally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but we don't know the answers, but we know that he has them and we know that if, if people get to know his voice and know their shepherd's voice, which the, the word promises that we will, uh, then, then that will lead him into all truth. And so that's a lot of what we do as well. And uh, it's, like, it's a kind of a conduit ministry. I feel totally. Like. Yeah. And it's true. Cause man, I tell you what you, we, uh, I think we learned, we will, we went into this very sober minded, but we learned really quick. Also, like we can't carry these things. And it's not on our own is to heal. It's like not our wisdom. Yeah. It's not our counsel. It's not, it's like, and it's not even our burden. It is in the moment, but it's like, we we're just like, Holy spirit. Show, like you are the one that heals. You are the one that speaks to them. You, your God, your voice is what's going to uh, give them life and bring them out of the situation. And so it's, you have to like, at least for me, I'm like constantly reminding myself of that, you know? And, it's it's a great because it's true first mm-hmm. of all right and but it's also necessary or we'd die we'd burn out we'd we'd be like i can't take this because we hear a lot of heavy things right so that's good final question are you guys starting a podcast or not <laughs> what do you say <laughs> i know that when you go to your website there's a podcast tab <laughs> and it says podcast coming soon <laughs> yeah. is this true Man, let, you know, I've talked to you a little bit about this and Darren has been a great cheerleader on getting us to start a podcast and I'm a sl- I'm a processor in a lot of ways. I like to overthink. Uh, I, I love to have one. I want a good, I'm just being honest. I, I want a good, I want a good vision and a mission and a strategy for it. Yeah. And so my hesitant, and you know me, I, do. I don't want to. I hate doing something because I feel like everyone else is doing it. In fact, it makes me do one and right. not do one. Correct. But, um, so I want one, but I want a unique one. Yeah. But I, but I'm, that means I could never do one. That's so, right. But you want one that's unique. Like your ministry is unique. And yeah. So I feel like you guys have things mm-hmm. to discuss. You too. Yeah. I will let you guys think about that. We, you guys it is on the radar. It is on the radar for sure. <laughs> it is on the radar, and I think you're going to help us get it yes. set up. And I, I don't want equipment to be a problem. So, yeah, yes, to answer your question, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, will it be any good or a value? Maybe. Maybe. I don't maybe know. Not. Of course. <laughs> I don't know, but um, but everyone's got one. I like it. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I think you should totally do it. The guy that mows my lawn has a podcast. He told me. Does he? No, but I wouldn't be surprised he might. <laughs> he knows someone who does for sure. Man, guys, I love you guys. I am so thankful for you guys just over the last year and a half, just the risks that you're taking like as a lifestyle mm. is very, very inspiring to me. And um, keep it up. 
Thank you. Thank Keep you. it up. Keep Thanks taking for having us. us on. We love this. We love this show. One way that this could be less risky, y'all, <laughs> is if you guys go and support Safe Time. So I want to encourage everybody. I just feel like there's going to be somebody listening to this mm-hmm. that thinks this is such a unique, clever, <laughs> strange ministry, simple ministry, and you're going to want to go check it out. So go to safetime.live and look into it. Like Josh said, we're going to direct you to the Father. Mm-hmm. Ask him if he wants you to support this thing. I just feel like the Lord's going to provide in that way. So Amen. guys, go check it out. Safetime.live. Check out Safe Time on Facebook and on Instagram. Also, you can follow Josh Littlejohn and Nacy Littlejohn. Mm-hmm. And they'll be, I'm sure, sharing Safe Time stuff all over their pages too. So yeah. check it out. Josh, will you uh, pray us out, sir? Yeah, I will. Thank you, Father, for this uh, podcast. Thank you for everyone that's listening. I just pray for uh, for the message you've given us to go out and and. And if it comes through us, that's great. But really, we just thank you that you, you've you made things so that we don't have to be afraid of the dark. We can bring things out of, out into the light with people that love us. And so if that's you, uh, for anyone listening that that's you, I just pray for courage for you right now, for strength, uh, for the discernment to hear his voice and when and where and whether to speak up or not and with whom. Uh, but that's, but Father, thank you for the for Darren. I just bless this ministry as well, and it's such an honor to uh, to be in your body and your family. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you.